hello everyone today i'm going to teach you about a very interesting topic and also a very important topic as far as neat undergraduate examinations are concerned and that is as you can see on the board it's a central nervous system development now you can ask me why just a simple cns development why not a pns development too now let me let me tell you something that i said that the nervous system as you all know at this moment that is differentiated into divided into two parts one is the central nervous system one is the peripheral nervous system questions are asked on cns development more often than on pns development rather there had been no questions on pns development because that is a bit complicated which we study under the uh, subject of embryology when you become a doctor or when you cracked the neat ug so in the first year of medical science we study embryology where we study the different development the developing parts where we study pns development but right now we need to concentrate on cns development now before starting off with the embryonic structures let us first review that what are there what are the parts that are there that form the central nervous system and we'll start with the brain obviously the most interesting organ that human beings and other animals have so this is a very schematic diagram of course it looks very alien like but of course it's our brain our very own brain this if you think it to be the brain then this is the spinal cord this is the spinal cord and this is the brain so what is connecting the spinal cord with the brain the brain stem the stalk that is the brain stem now you all know that brain stem can be divided into three different parts which are from below just below the brain stem is the midbrain below the midbrain is the pons and underneath the pons lies the medulla oblongata now you may ask me and that's a very crucial thing to ask that is when does the medulla oblongata become the spinal cord it's very easy it's very simple there's actually no structural difference between the last the termination of the medulla oblongata and the initiation of the spinal cord because the medulla oblongata ends at the location where the medulla oblongata basically comes out of the skull which is a foramen known as the foramen magnum the large foramen which we find at the base of our skulls so from below just below the foramen magnum we have the spinal cord now since we have reviewed the cns structures so reviewing the embryonic structures we will start with the embryonic plate so what is the embryonic plate but that is a discussion that we should discuss when we are talking about the reproductive system the embryological part of the reproductive system so that is not the topic of discussion at this particular moment so we should understand that an embryonic plate is a leaf like structure which uh, can be seen under an electron microscope on the day uh, 10 or basically the second week of development of the embryo so this if you think as the embryonic plate this has got a very vital structure as far as our cns development is concerned it starts with a primitive node it's a pit which is called either a primitive pit or a primitive node which then extends as a primitive streak now this forms what is known as the notochord now what is the notochord notochord forms the basis of the body axis however as far as cns development is concerned notochord is not required per se but why did i say a notochord because just above the notochord a structure is formed which is known as the neural tube so the neural tube is going to be the embryonic derivative of the adult cns so this might be asked as an mcq that what is the embryonic derivative of the cns so you'll have to answer neural tube so what happens to the neural tube as you can see the neural tube should have been a tube like structure it is the distal portion is tube like however the proximal pro portion has got three vesicles three dilatations and these dilatations enlarge to form somewhat a structure like this what is this now now these are basically the three dilatations which i have magnified and drawn over here why because these are the structures that are going to form the basic parts of the brain as well as the brain stem so let's start with the first dilatation pro mes and rom pro means the prosencephalon mes is the mesencephalon and rom is the rhombencephalon so there are three basic dilatations forming three basic structures of the adult brain now the these terms are very very confusing as you can see right here from now therefore i'll i'll make you 
understand and remember in a way that you will never forget because these are pertinent questions. Most importantly, like throughout whatever I am going to say, this is going to be the table that you need to know and that you need to revise just before the day of the exam. So you need to focus on this and this was the groundwork to know this. So starting with the prosencephalon, it has got two parts. One is the telencephalon and one is the diencephalon, not shown in this diagram, which would have made the diagram much more complex. The second one is the mesencephalon and then comes the rhombencephalon, which has again got two parts, the metencephalon and the myelencephalon. Now, prosencephalon, in biology or in any science, pro means something which is ahead. So the forward structure. So prosencephalon will obviously lie in front of any other part of the brain. And that is why prosencephalon will give rise to the cerebral hemispheres. The hemispheres that are here in front, the anterior most structures. So telencephalon, the first part of prosencephalon will give rise to the cerebral hemispheres. And then the next part which is known as the diencephalon. Now diencephalon lies just beneath the telencephalon which I will describe in a diagram later on. So diencephalon will give rise to the pituitary thalamus and the hypothalamus. Now let me tell you at this point that there are a lot of structures in the adult brain. However, we have only focused on just a few structures as you can see. Why? As I have told you that this topic is a very important topic of neat undergraduate examinations and since I have analyzed all the last, suppose the past 10 years question papers and these are the examples that they want. You don't need to know all the structures and the derivatives. You just need to know the questions that get repeated and the questions that might come in the next year or probably afterwards. So this is what I have analyzed and this is what I have written out here, the parts that are absolutely necessary for you to know as far as neat UG is concerned. So what you need to know is that from diencephalon, three structures, pituitary, the thalamus and then the hypothalamus. Now the next structure is the mesencephalon. Now mesencephalon, meso, comes from the term meso. Meso in biology or in any science means the middle, the middle portion. So mesencephalon will give rise to the midbrain. Now the last structure is the rhombencephalon which will give rise to the brainstem. How? Rhombencephalon has got two parts, the metencephalon as well as the myelencephalon. Metencephalon will give rise to two parts, the pons and the cerebellum. And myelencephalon will give rise to the middle oblongata. Very confusing, right? So I have something very interesting for you. This is what it is. You are not getting it, right? Neither the diagrams that you got at the very first moment nor this mnemonic. It says that me and my PCM. So what do you get out of this? Me stands for the metencephalon. My stands for the myelencephalon. From me you get two derivatives P and C. What is P and C? Pons and cerebellum. And from my you get myelencephalon and what do you get? An adult derivative from the myelencephalon, it is the M, which is medulla oblongata. Now it gets easier, right? Making sense. CNS development is making sense, right? Yes, it's easy, very easy. So at the end of the day, what do you need to know? This table. You need to have a prior concept of the development, which I have taught you. And at the end of everything, you need to revise this small table, this small chart. And questions from CNS development are going to be asked from this small chart itself. Thank you.